Capitol Hill last night as Veterans Affairs Committee members grilled top VA officials following that scathing new IG report revealing a, quote, systemic breakdown nationwide in the health care system for our nation's heroes. And for one freshman lawmaker whose father served in the military, the issue is deeply personal. Our focus remains on caring for these veterans. We join if that's you the case, in Ms. this. Mooney, May I finish? No, because I have five minutes. Miss Mooney, if that has been the case, how could Dr. Lynch go to Arizona and not talk to anybody involved that had anything directly to do with this? And there's 40 unexplained deaths. There's an IG report that has fact. And you all seem to have turned the facts to a general counsel, and we know less tonight. I have more questions tonight than I have had when I walked in here. That is Republican Congresswoman Jackie Walarski of Indiana, and she joins me now. Congresswoman, good to see you. You asked officials if they felt they had directly contributed to any of these veterans' deaths, and they said what? <laughs> they said nothing. Gretchen, for three hours, three and a half, four hours, they said nothing. And honestly, this is the same situation today. I walked into that hearing, done a lot of research. I've been sitting on this committee for almost 18 months as a freshman. I've heard enough, seen enough, know enough, researched enough to call for General Shinseki's resignation back when the American Legion did. That group last night literally said less than they ever had in any other hearing, in right. any other um, research that we have done. So, it, I, you know, the, the facts are still the well, same facts today, Gretchen. We know less today. They they provided no information well, whatsoever. That's scary. That, that's it's scary. scary. Okay, Congresswoman, stand by if you will, because I just want to alert in here because now our own Ed Henry hammering Jay Carney with more questions. Let's listen. Receive later this week. The issue of accountability. I want to go back to the CIA question you got before about this official being outed. Doesn't the public have a right to know who in the military put that person's name on the list and exposed he and his family to potentially being killed? Ed. What I would say uh, about that is simply that the Chief of Staff asked the White House Counsel, Neil Eggleston, to uh, look into this and to make recommendations uh, so that processes are placed, uh, put in place so that something like this doesn't happen right. again. I understand the processes moving forward. Who's been punished on that? All right, so the line of questioning changed there and it went on to another problem for the White House, the CIA, and releasing the name of that person uh, overseas. Okay, let's go back to our Congresswoman Wolarski. I know that this is, it's so personal to you because your father was a veteran, right? He was, and he died of colon cancer. And you know, I sat three weeks ago and listened to Barry Coates that came into the to the committee that really kicked this off when he was a young guy. The guy was in his early 40s, and there he sat in front of this committee with a death sentence of metastasized colon cancer through his body. And I know what that guy's going to go through. You know, I helped take care of my dad. And you're talking about you know people that have to take care of their aging baby boomer family members, which is a lot of your listeners, a lot of my constituents, and this should not be happening. Well, you know, one death should be enough to change what we're doing in the VA, well, let alone a systemic problem. You, you also asked at the hearing last night if any of those members would support criminal charges against people within the VA if it's proven that something has been done that's criminal. What did they say? Correct. Um, they kind of they kind of stammered along and and didn't really say yes or no. Mr. Lynch did say yes that he agrees with whatever the IG says, but you don't see any urgency, Gretchen. There's no urgency in the VA. You know, I really do believe they have a five alarm fire, and I think anybody else, you and I, if we saw something like that happen with lives in danger, potential deaths coming down the road here with with terminal cancer, I we know. would do every we would move heaven and earth to well, get to an answer and a solution. It, and that's it, what these people deserve. It is a bit mystifying because I have to tell you, since we started covering this story almost every day on The Real Story, I've been hearing from hundreds of viewers on Facebook, oh, on too. Twitter, you know, oh, on email. So, so you've got to wonder yeah. then, the president must be hearing this as well. We just heard Jay Carney earlier in the show saying that the president's going to wait for more reports to come back. What do you make let's of that? Not for, well, let's not forget two, two important things here. The president's going to wait for what? What else do you need to hear? What else do you need to see? How many more people need to die? How many people need to sit on a list that they don't even know why they're sitting on a list? But Gretchen, how long do the American people and our veterans have to wait for the Senate to take up even one bill? Just one. 
You know, this is a crisis in this nation. It's a tragedy that we're in a position right now that we're going to have a national investigation and nobody in that agency or this administration is willing to move the Senate to even entertain one bill when we've passed 14 bills and most of those are bipartisan. Where in the world is the accountability of the Senate? Well, and I know exactly what you're talking about because was it last week where you had, it was bipartisan and it would have enabled Shinseki to be able to fire people below him, which amazingly he can't do all Already, like you can in private enterprise. And why did the Senate not want to take that up? Yeah, that's a good question. Why did the Senate not want to take up the other 13? Why have we continually sat here talking to the American people when we have no partner willing to move this legislation? They're responsible for these veterans, too, and they have veterans in their district. You know, this is like an onion. And as we peel back every layer and continue to drill down, and my commitment, I'm telling you, I'm going to keep drilling down on this thing until we literally root out the corruption, the fraud, and get to the bottom of this systemic issue. It's not just about Shinseki stepping aside or leaving, although I think that's the right step and I think it's absolutely necessary, especially with that report yesterday. But if you sit where I sit on the committee for the last 17 months, you'd probably join me in saying, I've seen enough. How many more people have to go through this suffering? This is America's finest. These are our heroes. No doubt. No and, doubt. And, yeah, absolutely. It, this buck has to stop somewhere. And so last night, I was asking these folks, does the buck stop with you? The, all the American people well, want to know is, where does the buck stop can, and what are we going to do to move forward? Yeah, exactly. And we can tell how impassioned you are about this issue. And uh, we'd like to continue to hear from you. So, Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining thank us today. Thank you, Gretchen. Thanks very much. Time to check in now with Shepard Smith reporting live from the Fox News Deck. Big news day, Shep. What do you have coming? It is, Gretchen. And we'll be speaking live with one of the first whistleblowers to expose this scandal at the VA. And she says...